How's it going guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and I've got some more tablets to review. One of those is the Motorola Droid Zyboard 8.2. Now there's two Zyboards in the Droid family. There's the 8.2 and the 10.1, but specs are very similar. So you're looking at a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor over here, a 3,960 milliamp hour battery. It's got a five megapixel camera on the back, a front facing 1.3 megapixel camera, and Android 3.2. So this is a new tablet on the scene, and it's a new display size as well, 8.2 inches. So it's veering off from that seven, 8.9, 9.7 and 10.1 scheme that we've seen so much over the years. So is this the device to get? Should you spend the money in the two-year agreement and go with Verizon with LTE connectivity given the outages recently? We'll find out in the review. But first, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones, tablets, and more. So when you walk in the Best Buy Mobile, you're going to walk out working. You get the Zyboard or let's say the Droid Razor and you walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your YouTube settings because we all know you love watching phone dog videos, right? Right. So they'll help you set that up at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look at this Motorola Droid Zyboard 8.2. You know, just to give you a spoiler alert for part two, and I think you'll see this as we're browsing through, I really haven't been impressed with the speeds of this device. Now, it has a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. You'd think it'd be relatively quick. And in most things, you know, it keeps up. But I noticed a lot of lag, particularly if you saw part one, where I, I was browsing the web, and it took its sweet time to pinch to zoom. You see it from time to time when you're scrolling through the screens. This thing just bogs down at random times, and it's pretty frustrating. So let's get the speed test stuff out of the way, because I did download Quadrant Standard, and then, of course, I have... Yeah, that's fine. Compatibility zoom, I agree. And uh, let's take a look at the speed test because this is running Verizon's 4G LTE network, so we're going to configure this for a server. And for whatever reason, our location stuff isn't working quite as well as it should. So we're going to load up Shelby, and we'll take a look at the, uh, the speed test here and see. Now, there's Verizon cell site installed right uptown near my office, but still, you know, 4G LTE speeds have been pretty decent all throughout testing this. I've been really impressed with how quickly web pages open up, how quickly you know, anything that requires a connection, Android market and more, uh, how quickly it opens up. So let's try this and see. I don't know. It's taking its sweet time right now, but we'll, take, we'll, uh, we'll see here. Taking its sweet, sweet time. Come on now. Testing a ping. Let's get this thing rolling. There it goes. And let's see, uh, about 14 megabits per second, looks like. I meant to switch it over, but I forgot. For 14 point, about 15 megabits per second on the download. And then we'll wait and see on the upload here. I don't know why it's taking so long. Let's see. I wonder if we can flip it up here and get it to roll. So about 4 megabits per second for whatever reason. It was doing 14 just fine. And of course, Verizon, like I said, has had some issues with the LTE network. It's been down uh, several times this month. And so I think it may be, still be experiencing some kind of weird fluctuations with LTE. But actually, while that's loading up, let's go ahead and put this in the nice Motorola case that they uh, were nice enough to send over for an accessory. So we've got crazy numbers that don't make a lot of sense. 4 megabits per second on the download, 32 megabits per second on the, uh, on the upload. Clearly, something's wrong there, but we'll chalk it up to, uh, to the LTE network having some issues. So they've got some nice accessories with this device. You can get cases and more as part of the accessory ecosystem. And of course, you know, easy holes in the back to access your power button and your volume rocker as well. Now you can see, of course, tablet 8.2 inches, a much larger display than a phone. So when you open up applications like Gmail, you'll really see that they've made or they've taken advantage of the screen real estate. So you've got all your inbox, your outbox, your sent stuff over here. And I can come over here to uh, Emoji Music, for example. And you'll see it shifts over. All my emails are here and easily accessible. The email account is up in the left-hand corner. And then I can see this. And the header, just like on the phone, the header stays at top as I'm scrolling up and down. And I can easily respond. I can forward, reply, or reply all, and delete. It's funny because, again, looking at this versus looking at Ice Cream Sandwich, you really see some of these icons and how they've carried over into Android 4.0. So it really is a fusion between the tablet OS and some of the best things of gingerbread as well. So, again, back to home so you can see some of the other stuff. Motocast pre-installed, and this gives you the ability, just to show, give, uh, give you a quick look here, it gives you the ability to access your music and your photos and your videos all from your computer to your tablet. All you have to do is install some software uh, on your computer and roll from there. This also, like I said in part one, has Moto Print, and then it has some other stuff like Digit. It has Slingbox uh, as well pre-installed, and that'll kind of walk you through um, how to get that stuff set up and ready to go on your tablet. Now, Moto Pack particularly interested me, and before we go to Quadrant, actually, I want to show you Motopack because that's not what I meant to click on. Let's go back over here. Too many operating systems in too little time. Everything's in the opposite sections here. Motopack, 
and you can see it's almost like an app store within an app store. So you've got Android Market for apps, then you have Motopack. These are applications that have been guaranteed to work on the tablet uh, without problem, and you can see they're organized by on-campus, home office, media lounge, e-library, kids, and games. So I can go into home office, for example, and I hate when they do this because you know, some people will say, hey, you know, the more app stores, the better. You can have Amazon, you can have this, you can have the Android market. I like having one centralized marketplace because it's just easier for consumers. So I think people like, you're, if you're watching this video, you're probably like me, you can handle three or four app stores. I don't think the average consumer really wants to see three or four different app stores. I think it gets confusing over time, but you do have that. Uh, out of the box as well. And then of course you have Android Market which looks just like the phone version although you get apps, music, books, and movies over here. So Google Music, yeah, it's kind of turned into its own little iTunes ecosystem if you will. And you can download music and come over here to apps uh, as well. And just like the phone one, you know, they've kind of standardized this. And uh, it's got this nice little transition between big boxes, small boxes, it really draws the eye in. And just like on the phone, you scroll over between top pay, top free, it's just more screen real estate. But the overall setup is very similar. So obviously, optimized for 8.2 inches here as opposed to you know the Galaxy Nexus where it's optimized for 4.65 inches but you can see same effect over here both of those look almost exactly identical so they kind of opt they kind of uh, standardize those between the phones and the tablet so there's not a whole lot of difference there but let's take a look at quadrant standard and see what we can do on this bad boy and of course it's never indicative of you know real time day to day performance but it's always kind of fun to do because you can compare to other tablets and if your friend has that Galaxy Tab 10.1 they can say you know well my score is faster my score is slower than yours and uh you can either brag or uh, or be sad if your score is uh, slower than theirs. So, you know, while we're doing that, while that's running, and talk a little bit about the tablet, I really like the design of this tablet. You know, I think Motorola does a good job with the design. It fits right in with that Droid line of kind of the brash edges and robot-y look with the, uh, the metal back. But again, it's just a little bit too laggy for me in comparison to the Galaxy Tab 10.1, the Galaxy Tab 8.9, uh, and then of course the Apple iPad too, it's just laggy from time to time and I think you'll see that. It's also, they've come down a little bit in price, but it's still just a tad bit too expensive to me, particularly uh, if you're, you know, looking into keeping this long term, you know, you may want to look at something else. So that's kind of a frustration, but again, you know, great AI accessory ecosystem here, some nice Motorola features like Moto Print, I really like that. And then I, I like some of the Motorola stuff that comes pre-installed as well. You've got a nice ecosystem going. Unfortunately, so does Android, so you can't have, it's hard to have two app stores uh, and one device. So we're going to bookmark that result. And let's see, 2,584. And sorry to blind you with the spotlight there. 2,584. So a reasonable speed there. Not bad. Not bad at all. So let's flip it back around so you can get one final look uh, at this tablet. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's take a look at the camera. 5 megapixel camera on the back. I'm going to go ahead and flip this up, actually, and see if we can get this to position out. Let's see what we can do. Like, see if we can get it to... Of course, this is not the right way to do it, but I'm going to see if we can kind of do an unofficial picture here, and we can take a picture of... I'll uh, do the Galaxy Nexus, just because it's close by, and we're going to flip this back between camcorder to camera. And let's get the case out of the way. And let's get this to focus in. 5 megapixel camera, like I said in the back, it does shoot HD video, and then you have your front facing camera as well. And you can see it focuses in pretty decently, although it seemed to, there we go, that's better. So we can take a look at this and see a relatively decent picture for 5 megapixels, not bad uh, at all. And then of course pinch to zoom, relatively responsive, still a little bit of lag from time to time, but you can see the, uh, the checkered marks on the Samsung, the Samsung uh, logo there that's elevated, and of course the, uh, the speaker grill down there at the bottom. Uh, of the device. So it's really a decent picture for 5 megapixels. Again, it's not going to replace your point and shoot, but that's pretty good for a, uh, for a tablet with a 5 megapixel camera. Not bad at all uh, there. Let's take one quick look at Google Music so you can see the integration here. And of course, like I said, when you download songs through the Android market, it's very easy uh, and they sync right over to, uh, to Google Music. But let's just say, let's do, let's do the Wobble. It's a good song. Let's see here. We're gonna wobble it. Wobble baby. Wobble baby. Wobble baby. Wobble. So anyway, or we can just do Caribbean Queen. We'll go back to this one. That works. And the speakers, I will say, are fantastic on this device. They're on both sides, and this is turned up to full volume, so you can get a listen here and see what it's like. Play button. A lot of screen real estate again. I can access. Hit the plus here, I can add it to a playlist, one of my, my running playlists, for example. And I can see the artist, see the album, see how far along I am. Thumb it up, thumb it down, and I've got all my controls 
over there. So pretty impressive. The speakers are nice in this device. So all in all, you know, another good addition to the tablet line, not just on Verizon, but in general. I mean, there's some hot competition right now. There's this bad boy. There's a Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, and of course the Tab series in general. Uh, and then you have the Apple iPad 2, the Asus Transformer series, and more. So a lot of competition is beginning to heat up just like the phone market. And unfortunately, you know, I really like the way this looks. I love the feel. I like the size of it. I think it's a little bit laggy, though, and that's kind of a frustration. I hope that can be fixed in a future software update. But as of right now, it's just, I don't know, a little bit too laggy for me with a pitch to zoom and scrolling between home screens. I think you saw this. If you watch part one and part two, I think you'll agree with me because there were definitely some points through the review where I saw that. Much more coverage to come on the Motorola Droid Zyborg 8.2 on PhoneDog.com, complete with a pretty awesome little Motorola case that they were nice enough to send over. So special thanks to Motorola. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're always doing giveaways. We're on there. We're cool people to talk to. You should check us out, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, PhoneDog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Let me know what you think of this tablet. If you bought it, you're thinking about buying it, I'd love to hear from you. Hit me up on one of those mediums, either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.